welcome back to Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon with Justin and Ulam. We are proceeding once again to the Dragon Kin Realm Chapter 24, so I will attempt to speed through most of this. Uh, as you should know if you watched the previous episode, we've already attempted this once and failed on account of how much our forces took an absolute beating the previous map and how we are now down to almost no usable units in real particular. So last time one of the things we did was bring Zane in order to try to copy. Turned out that just probably isn't going to really work. <sighs> oh, they gave... Why was she all the way at the bottom then? Interesting. Well, unfortunately, while I'd love to bring Elise for some healing purposes, she's a baseline cleric, which is just almost certainly not going to cut it. <sighs> going off of what I feel went wrong last time, if we're to have really any chance of getting through this map this time, I think a couple of the things that we need to focus on are A, getting hardened swapped out for uh, these steel weapons out for some dragon killers. And unfortunately we don't have enough in our inventory at the moment. I'll put on, you know, what ones we have in between. And otherwise we'll have to use the VIP and silver cards to uh, obtain several more. Which fortunately we do have a small amount of gold already and this one bullion to be sold. So we should have enough gold to make some use of this. Ay, 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 ay. I think there is supposed to be like a uh, secret shop on this map, but unless I'm mistaken, I think I remember reading that the one on this map is like a, uh, or maybe it was on the, it's either on this or it was on the previous, and regardless, it was for a uh, set of three master seals, which clearly we have <laughs> next to no use for. All of our remaining are either promoted or two of them unable to promote on account of being special classes with special circumstances. <sighs> so, other than that, I guess I'll just go ahead and organize the inventory and see you at the start of the match. All right, I think we're just about ready to begin. Uh, we've got... I, while doing my uh, inventory stuff, I realized that we still have a, uh, actually a couple warp staves that we've just absolutely not used. So, <laughs> the first thing first is going to be getting Marth to one of two important locations, which unfortunately I just realized means we are definitely nixing the idea of him using the VIP and silver card, so I shouldn't have had him still sitting on those, but whatever, I guess. Let's see, what can he do with this? Unfortunately, without her being able to warp to him, I don't think this is tenable. Times two would be just too shy of 40. So yes, it would kill. He actually stands a reasonable chance of dodging. But he has about the same chance of dodging as the opponent has of dodging, and he needs to land both of his hits. So, I think we'll leave Marth there, which will unfortunately attract some negative attention, but with Marth sitting on this fort, that should help, and next turn we can warp Tiki in to assist. Meanwhile, in similar news, we can have Sita attempt an assist, although, yeah, for what little this does, this land, all of it, it belonged to us. Then you humans took it, defiled it. Yep, we'll just see about that there, buddy-o. So, I am still planning, well, not a bad crit, not a great crit, but we'll definitely take it. So we unfortunately will still need to find some way of trying to get Sita around through here safely. I don't know how. If all these guys start coming up this way, we can probably have her slip down here below where these uh, archers are. We still need the thief to go and open the chest for us, because I'm not planning on bothering otherwise. So, uh, not totally sure how that, all that's going to go down, and we're going to have Harden, well, he can't go into the mountains and come through the way that we had previously been playing, but he, with 
uh, Worm Slayer and Dragon Pike, he should be far more capable of defending this area over here. And, yeah, I guess we're leaving Tiki right there for right now anyhow, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, Alright, so that's one dragon. Goodness, that's a lot of damage. And Marth didn't get a second hit on him. Alright, well. Fort er, uh, Warp was not the only stave that we gave to Lena. Marth has a little bit more than just that up his sleeve. No, we don't actually want to go over there. Well, I don't know. <sighs> this, this is just getting dicey. There's no two ways about that. Is the other... No, I don't... Well, hold on. Yes, the other archer is protecting this one. Oh, right. Oh, and I did not remember this time to have her take the stinking <laughs> Iot Shield. <sighs> Criminy. She can't kill him with that anyway. Question. She would be much more likely to actually get both these... I was gonna say, we don't even need a crit, but... Uh, Enter Emperor Medius, forgive your servant's weakness! All right, so actually, I think we're gonna go ahead and probably nip this in the bud right here. Don't worry, we're not gonna end the episode just because we're already done with this. We're just going to proceed and see if we stand a ghost of a chance against even the next, against what I checked. The next level is the final level. I really doubt we can beat it, and if we lose Marth on it, we're just gonna go ahead and say, sorry, this run ended up failing, which, sucks since we got so far, but on the other hand, at least we didn't lose earlier. <laughs> Emperor, the enemy has broken through the gates! That impudent boy! Have the guards take their positions. The keep must be defended. At once! <sighs> You'll find an earth dragon like me harder to tame than Garneth, brat! Come and face me. I'll tear the ground asunder and send you straight down to hell! Yeah, well, we'll just see about that now, won't we? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. We gave up on our chance to res anyone, which to be fair, I don't think there's any one person we could have res that would have really turned this around that much. I totally should have read that first one. And now the League had cornered their arch enemy within his castle. They broke into four groups and stormed the four gates of Dolor Keep. I'm really not sure that we did that. You may say we did. I don't know if we have that many people. <laughs> Unaware that this was exactly what Medius was expecting. Bravely, these warriors fate had chosen the These warriors fate had chosen steeled themselves for one last struggle. I think there should have been a comma right there, but whatever. Alright, so. Yeah, once again, I mean, almost certainly only bringing these five. All right. And actually, if we, yeah, we really can't afford, well, Tiki might. Tiki's one of the few who actually, oh my goodness. Such nonsense out here. Is this him? Yep. What's something called an earth stone? Oh, goodness gracious. Great, Mart's outside locked. Oh no, there's an open gate there. There's one vendor and several forts. For crying out, actually, <laughs> what do you know? There is actually a, uh, actually there's several ballista. So actually we absolutely will be bringing Beck. He will get Oh, he's only got one more use of the Thunderbolt anyway. Well, we'll see where we end up using that. And not up there, that's for sure. But I don't know exactly who we can safely put up there. If we wanted to open that gate to let Marth in this... Because, yeah, the problem is we don't get to choose where Marth's going to be. Oh, my 
ganas. So, based on what we're looking at here, pachyderm. Looks like there is only two. So one of them, let's see. And this guy is close enough in range. All right, hold on. A few more bits. We're actually also going to go ahead and bring Rickard. He doesn't need to be holding on to that talisman or killing edge. He doesn't, he's just here to unlock a door, honestly. Specifically. There he is. This door. All right, so switch you two around. Probably not put you here. What I'm thinking we're gonna do, what I'm thinking we're gonna do is have you over here so that you can, well, hold on. Yeah, so put you in this spot. Well, no, not that spot. Can you, what's your range? You can, the closest you could move would be up into here, and then your range does appear to cover. So you should be able to hit this guy with pachyderm at any rate. Probably go ahead and have, well, uh, maybe keep Sita with Marth. I have Tiki over here with this group. And Harden. And swap you two so that Harden can rush forward and take out this pachyderm. Well, you can take out this pachyderm. And ideally, if possible, not while getting right up next to the thing, because, well, you have a silver lance. Yeah, it's really this bulk enough. No, and the wall is thick enough. Yeah, actually, never mind. He can get, he can afford to get right there. The only things that are covering the whole of the area are the two pachyderms, and then I think there's some smatterings of swarm around here. <sighs> healer with them, or healer with... Ah, uh, we'll keep Lena over here. Uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and see how this is going to be our final map, one way or the other. Uh, we have enough room to go ahead and store the two cards. Keep the Worm Slayer, I suppose. Retrieve. Um. There we are. Killing Edge. Have Sita specifically retrieve a, uh, for one thing, the Iot's shield, and probably just another javelin, honestly. Otherwise, she's probably fine. The dragon pike certainly is handy. Victory is defeat boss, but I really don't think on this map we could afford any warp shenanigans. After all, he's protected, and there's almost no way without taking most of these units on in a fairly traditional sense that we're going to, yeah, no, I don't think warp shenanigans are what this map calls for. So let's absolutely not conclude. So let's go ahead and have Lena convoy the warp. Fortify will be good, recover's good. I don't know if there's really anything else I'd, Hammerin's not gonna be useful enough in this one. Res resistance, that uh, could be sorta, but honestly, not more than honestly, just, I guess, go ahead and hold on to the warp for just in case. Beck will be able to use his one Thunderbolt, and then we'll still be able to use all these others to some extent. Tiki's taken Bantu's other Firestone, so she'll have plenty of that, as well as her Divine Stone for when it's needed. Harden should probably not be working off of those two dragon-based ones. If he can, any of the... I should go ahead and give him Gradibus. Uh... Well, no. Silver would probably just be better. Silver and some javelins, and then, whoop, no, not store, and then over here, can he wield? Can't wield Mercurius, so can he wield? No, so he can't wield silver swords. Um, I don't know if any of these are gonna be particularly appropriate then. <laughs> Shoot, I guess steel is really the best he can use at the moment still. 
And I suppose really that's it. All right. Here goes everything. We made it. Now we just have to find Nidius. Sire, Lord Goto is here to see you. Marth, you have fought splendidly. I would not call the last couple maps splendidly, but thank you. Lord Goto, what are you doing here? I washed my hands of humankind and their foolish ways long ago. But you and your companions have convinced me that was a rash decision. Perhaps there is hope for you yet. Allow me to offer what help I can. You mean you'll fight with us? Yes, I may lack the power to stop Medius, but his minions are another story. Let this old man strike them down and clear a path for you. I would love nothing more, sir. <laughs> the gods have chosen you, Marth, Prince of Light. Go now and win back a future for us all. Your family would be proud. Oh, boy. <laughs> wow, this is a long time ago. His last words were as follows. Tell my son that I leave the future of Altea and our continent in his hands. I do not remember what voice I did for him. Your sister knows that you are the future of Altea, nay, the whole land. I feel like I've been pretty consistent with his voice. Come, my friends, we have a dragon to tame. That's a weird way of saying put down. <laughs> Help me confine Medius to the shadows for all eternity, or at least until the sequel, and bring light back into the world. Okay. What, does he have a super ranged attack? Okay, no, they were just... Okay, so they just altered his stats, probably, based on that. Yeah. I don't... Was he... Was... I feel like he had 60 before. That's some crazy defenses, my dude! Oi, oi, oi! And... Yep, and his Earth Stone does allow him to counterattack from range. Only appropriate. It would be a little bit underwhelming if he couldn't. door move into this position thunderbolt oh that's very unfortunate so we will have to deal with at least one use of the pachyderm well will we have to deal with more than just that Pray tell. Yep. 26 isn't enough. Really, yep. And that's honestly the best he can do. Yeah. Alright. It's closer, though. Alright. Yeah, go ahead and equip that underneath the other one. So ready in position question oh shoot okay hello so I have a javelin if you up here with uh, this javelin equipped underneath this javelin there we go all right don't move too co oh you have swarm and fortifying recovery oh, wow you're great all right well in that case yeah, you have a pretty good chance of landing it. Please, take this pachyderm out. Uh, those will be... If we can take out the super ranged units... Fortunately, this last map is really constrictive with the, all the hallways, so we actually have a reasonable chance of being able to control the battlefield if we can... Well, explicitly that. Control the battlefield by keeping these super long range units from being able to just do whatever they please. There's really nothing we could warp Mars to that wouldn't be worse than where we are. Alright, takes a shot. Alright, well that hurt, but fortunately, not in too bad. Oh, sh oh good, that didn't heal that much. Okay, shoot, shoot, shoot. Hopefully we'll still be able to take him back down. Alright, so Silver Lance, unfortunately, instead of Javelin, but the Bolganone doesn't do that much, and we should be able to get a healer relatively close to him. Oh. He's gonna go after Harden in the first place, apparently. Whatever. Oh, of course you've got a Worm Slayer. <clears throat> well, at least she's not slow enough to get hit twice. 
All right. I am still very much not certain we're gonna survive this. Okay, okay, okay. So, you need... Where's the... All right, there's the... So, might have 15, 12, 18. It's probably the strongest. We need to eliminate that. Oh, shit. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, shit. Well, he's probably just dead now, then. Let's see. She could probably use the most help, but you can't really be the most help on that unit. So who else? Silver Sword, Silver Lance, Levin Sword. Yeah. Let's see, Pachyderm's the one you're going to hit the most with. And it looks like the one you could do the most with it to is this guy. So go for it. Hey, good hit. So, let's see, Lena needs to use, whoa, hello. All right, unfortunately she can't use recover from this distance. I don't know how much Fortify is going to recover to Tiki, but hopefully, hopefully just enough. Nope. Well, yeah. Again, now that we've saved a bunch of uses from not using her on the previous map, really, we stand the greatest chance now. So, yeah, might as well use the Divine Stone when we find use for it. <sighs> Probably should have waited on... Now, knowing that, I should have waited on using the uh, Restore until the end of the turn so that Fortify could be given to everybody. Alright, you've got Silver Lance, Silver Lance... Levin Sword, Silver Sword. All right, so I think probably our best option is to hit one of you two with a Silver Lance. Oh. Well, hold on. I need the, I need the number. How much is it? 14 back versus not too afraid of the two sword users versus 12. <sighs> guaranteed kills him. Does he guaranteed kill the because we can have another Fortify coming out for him, which should double, uh... No, he does not guarantee to kill you anyhow. So, yeah, we'll... Actually, yeah, we'll take what we can get... Hold on, if I move that far over... No, I am not inviting destruction from him. The Pachyderm is almost certainly going to go after, uh, ours, our Ballastician, which sucks, but... Oh, well. Alright, yeah, Silver Lance... Take some damage, and then we'll fortify it back on the next turn. Right, guys, at least down. Let's see. You have a javelin, you have a silver sword. What do you have behind her? Dragon pike. Shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. shoot. That's really not good. If at all possible, she needs to attack you. Oh, she, she really needs to not be dealing with any of them either. Really. You have a sword of some sort, right? Yeah, Alright, so what can Marth do to you? <sighs> not enough. One assumes, and one is correct. Could kill if he got a crit. We'll be in serious trouble otherwise. But honestly, that's, yep, and that's just the nature of this map at this point. We are just in serious trouble. Curiosity. Oh, you have a Dragon Pike too on the other hand. Oh, Dragon Pike doesn't do bonus damage either. Okay, so never mind. In that case, that's actually not as bad then. All right. And it can't do that much damage to you. And as long as they're both me or, uh, melee, yep, then actually that'll stop you up and they won't be able to proceed any further. Excellent. Yep, wing spear. There's really no other answer to it. Well, unfortunately, the math looks like it says that on the next turn, the, this guy will probably just attack, so you don't kill him, and the other two will get a chance, but whatever. Alright. Fortunately, you have a javelin, so that's not that threatening, but it's 
it's certainly concerning, especially because you need to just get over here. And while I'd love to have you use some other magic, what we really need you to use right now is Fortify to give us the best chance of next turn not immediately dying on several people. Yep, goes for it. Does he land? Yep. Shoot. Fortify is extending, but it's yeah. This is this is a really uphill battle. That I will be in full honesty here. I am not expecting us to win this. I am just looking to try to put up the best fight we can. Up, oh, that might be over right here. <laughs> Boy, I picked the right time to say something. All right, well. Uh, I'm afraid that's gonna have to be all she wrote. I really do not see us being able to do anything with what we've got at this point, considering the nature of this uh, Let's Play. Uh, if we were to, I, in my opinion at this point, the best that we could hope for would really be to go back, se we would have to go back several maps and change the way that we approach uh, this end game. Uh, looking back, seeing as how we are going to go ahead and call this the final episode of the series, uh, yeah, I definitely would have probably <sighs> tried to invest more in some mage. The issue is I'm not entirely confident that the right answer would have even been any of the offensive mages either. I'm thinking at this point, maybe not using any of the mages, still going with our plan for the healers of trying to get them from clerics up to bishops ASAP, and then trying to invest in some of them so that maybe they, because with their res, one of them, either Maria or uh, Lena, probably actually stood a reasonable chance of taking down uh, Garneth. And if, if that one change would have shifted so much of this end game. <sighs> We also definitely clearly did not give Marth enough attention, which I would argue is probably a result of st even still too much bloat. Uh, I think there's a probably, I don't know, I don't know if we could have made it work, but my guess is that I would have wanted to go from instead of two units of every type, I think we needed to maybe whittle that down all the way down to one unit of any given type and still not include one of every type, like I said, Maybe focus on just a single healer who is who becomes a bishop. I don't know. Maybe have a second healer because that has enough utility to have excuse for two. But especially if we have two healers, don't even bother with any of the offensive mages. That's what I'm thinking there. I think that that would have given enough experience to them. That, that would have helped a lot there. As far as flyers, I don't know. I, I mean... I feel like Minerva should not have been too big of an ask in addition to Sita. I think we were definitely right in the end not to use the White Wings. Uh, I don't know, maybe not using Minerva and giving Sita, because by the time Sita uh, ranked up, she had maxed her spears. So if I had given her a lot, because another issue is weapon skills. So a lot of people who would have had a lot of trouble getting their weapon skills up, I don't know if Sita would have been able to quickly enough get axes up. Barst, I think, was clearly a good idea. I think not having any of board or cord was a good idea as well. I'm, so I'm a little iffy on Minerva because of both. I would have, I like the idea of at least one other axe considering, like I said, I don't think Sita would have been worth bothering with Axe. I think it probably was also the case I shouldn't have bothered trying to teach uh, Minerva Lance at all on this, by the exact same token. But, I don't know, maybe two of them was already too much. I'm definitely thinking, considering we were going to end up using Harden as much as we were, I'm thinking going back, maybe not... Cain and Abel, instead just go ahead and continue using, uh, I've already forgotten his name, but, uh, the, uh, the, uh, older knight who, uh, we also had with us, who I just, who was a promoted unit right from the start, this game's version of Seth, which is, that's really backwards to say, I know, but I was introduced to Sacred Stones before this, so, to me, that's where the archetype starts, uh, I think investing in him instead until we get to Harden, 
And then at that point, it's maybe a little iffy as to whether we go ahead and have both of them. Or maybe just switch over to just using Harden. I don't know. We probably would have gotten away. Cavaliers are really useful. But we may have been able to get away with just pouring effort into Harden. Because he was, a, <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun, a real workhorse. We definitely needed to have one of the Knights. I'm not sure who. Probably Drug, just because of how early on they tried to give him to us. I should, because it, it became clear way too little too late that him with a Javelin was almost certainly meant to be our sniper counter. That screwed us up early on quite a bit. So that would have been good in the end. Maybe having the archers like at all, even in that early game, was also another experience sink that I just should have avoided. I mean, given my play style is one thing I should mention to couch a lot of these qualifications in. If you play this a lot more offense turn, you'll need a lot more of these offense units. But I prefer to move people in and defense turn things. So I, sh I should never have been investing in two different archers of two different classes. So many different offensive mages that clearly I was never giving enough attention. And even when I was, they were detracting attention from the defensive turn units that I was wanting to invest in. So, and then, I mean, I, I, I really think that we, if I had played our thief game a lot, just, just a little bit better, not brought him to that one map, he would have been able to do what we did, which was not use him offensively at all and totally get away scot-free with it. So that, I don't think, was a wrong decision at all for, uh, again, my play style. I'm trying to think if there were any other archetypes that I'm forgetting. Uh, technically, there would have been, like, any other snipers, but snipers would fall in the same category as archers that I just don't think I should be using. Uh, same probably with mounted archers. They would have been interesting, but not really appropriate for my play style. And if we'd done a lot of those things, like, because one of the other issues is I'm talking about, like, bringing on one at least other unit uh, in uh, Draug, which would have been another EXP sync, but if we take into account the fact that by the time, when I was trying to bring him in, at the time, I was so many units over bloated, I don't think that bringing him on would be as big of a problem if you count the fact that at the same time, I'm cutting out close to half of the unit bloat that I had at the time. Which also, now that I think about it, makes me feel a little more comfortable that, yeah, and if all of that early game had proceeded that way, I probably would have been felt a lot more comfortable going ahead and bringing on Minerva. And then Maria as a secondary healer probably wouldn't have used Alincia at all. Uh, especially because I think the only real need for Alincia specifically would have been to use that Alm Staff. And if I don't let any, if I play right, no one I need dies, I don't need to use that staff. One other interesting, uh, thing would be, I don't know how I feel about giving up the Star Sphere in exchange for Starlight. Because Tiki, with her Divine Stone and that Sphere, would be just so good. But, and the main thing that you're swapping that for, because I, I don't think I'm going to be able to use Starlight as an offensive magic, be, really, that is, it's trading that orb for that spell, so that you can trade that spell, essentially, for Falchion. And based on how things went there, I mean, again, in the first place, we just clearly had underleveled Marth. He needed more attention the whole time. And, I don't know, I don't know. Given, how, especially, we, we were going to get it so late... If I'd given him the proper attention, he may have been able to use just, like, uh, Worm Slayers and those other swords to such a good degree. I don't know that we would have needed Falchion if I'd given Martha the proper attention. And if we don't need Falchion, then we don't need to kill Garneth, which also means that map is significantly simpler. And if we don't need to kill Garneth, I really don't need to give concern myself that much with making sure that one of my, uh, healers has enough damaging power to use starlight to beat him i just need to make sure that they're able to do their healing job pretty well and do you know some damaging magic on the side 
which would, again, that would take a huge load off my mind going all the way back to early game. And, like I said, it would mean that we don't have to give up the Star Sphere, which would mean that we could have Tiki... I, I, we did. We didn't give it up that much sooner, so it wouldn't have meant that much extra EXP for Tiki because we still got a pretty good use out of it. But it might have been that little bit extra needed to push her right, you know, over that edge where we basically had her at strong but not overpowered. That might have been all it took to push her to overpowered. The only final remaining thing would be, <laughs> you may have noticed, I got a whole bunch of stat using items that didn't use one of them. That's just a problem I have with stat items. I can't get myself to commit to just using them. Had we done that a lot more, well, and one part of why I was so hesitant to use any of them, really, was because I kept wondering, who really is the best person to use them on? Are they going to end up dying and then that's a wasted use? So, you know, when should I use them, whatever not? I think in the end, if I had started this game a lot less blind and a lot more knowing what I know now, uh, there would have been a lot more, it would have been a lot more obvious to me who should have been getting a lot of those different uh, stat items. <sighs> as well as just, I mean, I don't think I could have gone wrong with either of the two that I think I have mentioned in passing in some of the episodes, either just pouring them all into Marth, I don't think that would have been a wrong decision, or pouring like half into him, half into Tiki, or all into Tiki. Either of those two are important enough units, in my opinion, that... I probably couldn't have gone wrong just, oh, hey, there's a new item. Right, just give it to one of them immediately, you know. So, uh, well, that's definitely been a very interesting, thought-provoking couple of episodes. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you next time with a new series right here. Yo, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and leave a comment. Subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want YouTube to let you know when more uploads arrive. I've put links in the description for if you want to follow the channel's Twitter or Facebook, as well as a link to the channel's Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.